Hey, this is TJ from TJOnTheRoad.com. Today we're taking a quick look at the Sound Tower Pro 3 Sound Editor for the Sequential Pro 3. Let's check it out. So here it is. It's the Sound Tower Pro 3 Editor. And this is the basic uh, layout. You'll see on the top row here, you have the banks uh, for the program banks and the librarian. Uh, along here, you have uh, the oscillator layout, then it'll scroll through to the envelopes, the effects, and the LFO, the modulation matrix. And then you'll have this additional pop-up here for the sequencer that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so let's start with over here on the banks here. Now, you have the ability to sort the user banks, the factory banks. You can sort by category. Uh, you can have an additional librarian that allows you to have a phantom bank so you can actually extend the range of the memory that's in the Pro 3. And then these are all the phantom banks that you can set up uh, for yourself. So you can, again, have more than just what's in the memory of the Pro 3. All right, so let's look at the uh, basic layout here. Some of this will be very recognizable if you have a Pro 3. Some of it is a little bit different based on the layout of the actual keyboard. Um, but it is nice in that, for example, the oscillators, you have all of the options available to you right away. You don't have to go into the screen on the keyboard. You have the ability to go to the sync, the slop, key follow, uh, the wave reset. And you have those options right along here. Uh, you have the ability to look at all the different shapes uh, for the third oscillator right here. So that's very handy rather than having to scroll through them on the keyboard. So this is really great. Now, next you have the glide here. Now, in here, I do wish they had a master glide control, uh, just like they have on the keyboard. They only had the individual ones. So you'll have to set all these at the same value if you wanted them all the same but it does have the ability uh, for the rest of the functions. Uh, next, you have the mixer section. Again, this has some of the additional uh, menu options available right here. Uh, the gate threshold for the external audio um, and some of the other ones, the release uh, velocity envelope. Um, but it does have the distortion over here, which I do think should be in the uh, effects section because the distortion in terms of the signal flow is after the filters and after the envelopes. But it is over here, uh, which is different than what it is on the keyboard. Next, you'll have the filter section. And this is exactly like it is on the keyboard itself. Uh, and then you have the ability to select the different types, ladder, state variable, and the four pole, and you can also select the compensation for the ladder. Uh, again, this is really nice. It's all in one place. So again, you don't need to go into the different sections. Uh, next, we have the feedback section. Now, this is a little bit different than what is on the keyboard itself in that the tuning and the amount are flipped. Uh, on the keyboard itself, the amount is on the top and the tuning is on the bottom. So uh, you may find yourself uh, doing that backwards at first until you get used to this. Next, they have what's really great is this miscellaneous section on the keyboard. That is a menu option, but it has all the options right here. So I think that's really, really great. It makes it very handy. Do all the selections over here. You can select your paraphonic mode right here. You can select the re-trigger. So that's really great. That's all in one spot right here. Next down here, you have the arpeggiator. You get the clock source, uh, the divide, excuse me, and the beats per minute, the swing amount, the mode. You can turn the ARP on and off here. So that's also really great. And you can have the range and the repeats. Now you'll see here at the top, I'm going to go back here. I just went through the oscillator section, which is basically comes up around here. And then it moves over to the envelope section. You can either click here and move it over to the envelope section, or you can just use the scroll bar to go through all the different sections. All right, so let's just hit the envelope sections. And you have the filter envelope and the amp envelope. Again, this is really great. It also has all the extra uh, menu selections like the delay and the loop. 
for all four of the envelopes. That's great. You can select a destination right from here. All the different destinations. For all four of the envelopes. So I really do like the way that's laid out. Uh, and here now is the effects section. Now, one thing I did find with the effects section, if you have it on a delay uh, and you want to sync it, okay, you cannot change the uh, clock divide of the sync uh, here. You'll have to do that on the keyboard itself because there's no way to change the clock divide here. Hopefully they uh, fix that later. But you can turn them on and off and do all the other functions here. You can select all the different types. So uh, that's really great. Next, let's move over to the uh, LFO section. You have the three LFOs. You can turn them on and off to sync. You can select the steps when you do sync it. Um, you can select the uh, frequency when it's not synced. Here, the amount, everything you normally would do is great. You can select the shape and you can select the destination and the wave reset. Uh, again, without any initial menu diving that you do have to do on the keyboard. Next, we'll go on the modulation section. Now, there are 32 slots of modulation that are on uh, the Pro 3. And that's a long set of slots back and forth. So this does allow you to toggle back and forth from what they are, from 1 to 16 to 17 to 32. So I think that's pretty cool. And here you can select the source. And it's nicely... Uh, place into different categories here. So that's cool. And again, with the modulation destination. All right, and last, we're gonna look at the sequencer. Now the sequencer is really great in that when you click it, it opens a new window. So what's really great about that is that you can actually have both windows going on at the same time. So if I want to go back to the oscillator section here and make some edits, and then I wanted to do those while I'm messing around with the sequencer, uh, that's really great. And also, it's really great if you have more than one monitor, you can move it over to a second monitor, say, for example, uh, like I have here, but I can't get that on the video right now. One bug that I have found with the sequencer is that the notes that are showing here are actually one half step down uh, from what has actually been sequenced on the keyboard itself, on the Pro 3. So that's a little bit of a bug. Uh, hopefully they fix that. But what you want to do is just take this, you can select the notes, you can change the uh, velocity, you can change the notes, okay? You can actually play the notes. I don't know if that's heard there. You can take the ratcheting, you can select that, you can select all these different things, you can track the cutoff, you can actually draw the different uh, tracks, so that's very handy. And again, you can change with all the different modes. The normal, the gate at the trigger, and the directions, and the source. So I do like the sequencer. Uh, as long as they fix that little bug, I think that's going to be really, really great. Um, you can also here, by the way, select paraphonic mode again if you want to, and you can select the paraphonic sequencing. So again, that's a menu item that you don't need to dive into. If you want a sequence that's more than just 16 steps, you can click the extend it. And then you can select the number of steps, either in defaults or just the exact amount that you're looking for. Next, we're going to look at a couple other things. Right, on the menu items here, you do have the ability to copy, paste, write different programs. You can copy the arpeggiations. You can copy the sequencing. So those are very, very handy tools there. Uh, you can create sequencer and filter templates. So that's also very cool. And this is a very cool function where you have sound generators. Uh, those sound generators, you can do what they call program genetics, uh, which is a really cool idea. You can take two different presets uh, and actually morph them together. All right, so this is the mommy preset and this is the daddy preset. If you morph them together, it randomly generates all kinds of other presets that are somewhere in the middle between those two. And you can get all their offspring, and then you can make edits there. Now, these are random between the two, but you can actually get very deep into this in terms of selecting what becomes random and what does not. So if you have two very similar presets, you may want to use uh, some of those functions to try to get somewhere in the middle.
All right, so there is a keyboard that you can have here as well. If you want to have that on the screen. And there is an XY pad on here that you can actually select the designations of. So you can move that around up here. All right, so let's I just want to talk about some things that I think they might need a little bit of improvements. Um, the positives, the cons is I really do love the layout. I really do love the ability uh, to go into the different menu options that are right here. Uh, it would be a lot easier to use this uh, than the keyboard itself and faster for that reason. Uh, there are a few different uh, oddities about it. If, for example, you go into the where you want to initialize a program, create an initialized program, you click that. Well, it calls the program basic P8. Well, this is not a profit eight, it's a pro three. So hopefully they fix that little bug there. Uh, as I said it before, I do think that the distortion uh, control should be in the effects section over here. I do wish they had a master glide control in the glide section. So you don't have to tweak each one of these individually. The feedback controls, they are flipped reversed on here. So the amount should be on where the tuning is and the tuning should be on the amount there to reflect the uh, same way that it is laid out on the keyboard itself, the Pro 3. Uh, when synced, there's no um, clock divide function to select that. So you'll have to select that on the keyboard. Hopefully they add that in. One thing I really wish they would be able to do is that if you wanted to double click on a parameter and just type it in, I uh, wish they could do that, but you can't really do that. There's no double clicking uh, availability on there. Again, there's the bug with the sequencer where sometimes it shows the notes as one half step down. Now, I did this before earlier and it did show it one half step down. Now it's showing correct. So uh, that's a little bit of a bug that hopefully they can get corrected. And lastly, one little thing about the destinations. You'll see they have all these subgroups. There's no individual subgroups for the tune feedback. The tune feedback is in the mixer. So if you're looking for that, that's where you need to find it. They probably should add, in my opinion, a feedback section in these subgroups. Just a minor thing. Overall, I think it's a great uh, 1.0 release for this editor. Do hope they do continue to work on it and tweak it a little bit, give you some updates on it. And uh, it'll be great to use with my Pro 3. Well, hey, that's it. It's the Sound Tower Pro 3 Sound Editor for the Sequential Pro 3. Uh, looks pretty good in the layout. Definitely works. Uh, there are a few bugs and some things I think it can be used in improvements on. Uh, but it is only version 1.0, so I'm sure they're going to develop it even more and make it even better. Thank you for watching this video. Please do share and subscribe to this channel. And thank you for your support. And make sure you check out tjontheroad.com for more to come.